Hey folks, if you use your computer as the center of your live keyboard rig, it's really important that you know you can trust that setup to be rock solid and reliable every time you perform live. That's what we're going to talk about in today's tutorial video. I want to share some practical tips that you can implement on your computer to make sure that your computer is optimized to run Main Stage 3 in a live environment. All right, folks, so today we're going to talk about CPU optimization and management. It's not the most glamorous of subjects, but it might be one of the most important that you need to have a handle on if you plan to use Main Stage 3 or any other digital software uh, as the center of your live keyboard rig. So in just a second, I'm going to turn around, we'll go to a screen share, and I'm going to share a few really quick tips and best practices that are going to make a big difference for you in optimizing your live performance rig. But before we do that, if you're a new MainStage user or you've been using MainStage for a while and you're not happy with the results you're getting, I'd love to invite you to sign up for our free Intro to MainStage video series. It's called the MainStage Starter Course. You can sign up right now on our website totally free and we'll email you a video in the series every day for five days. Um, so if this video is helpful to you and you want to get more confident with using MainStage 3, then definitely check out the MainStage Starter Course over on our website. Okay, so using your computer as the basis of your live keys rig is a relatively new thing. Um, back in the day, you had hardware, you knew the limits of that hardware, right? The people that designed these Yamaha and Roland keyboards, they put these limitations in place so that you couldn't ask more of the hardware keyboard than it was capable of doing. But now that you can connect pretty much any computer to a MIDI controller and ask it to do all of these complex things, that, that those guardrails aren't in place anymore. So it's possible, unfortunately, to ask your computer to do more than it's capable of doing uh, when it comes to playing these key sounds. So that's when you can run into issues like unexpected sluggishness, notes dropping out, crackles in your audio signal, or worst case scenario, the software crashes on you in the middle of a live performance. Well, we definitely don't want that, right? And the good news is that there's a lot of practical steps you can take that can go a long way towards making sure that your setup is reliable when you go to perform live. So let's turn around. I'm gonna go over to a screen share and I'm gonna walk you through the top tips that I think that you need to know to make sure that your computer is optimized to run main stage three for live performance. Now, when it comes to optimizing your computer to run main stage three, there are a couple things I recommend that you do even before you've opened up main stage. Uh, the first is make sure that you turn your Wi-Fi off unless you have a compelling reason to turn it on. Um, it's just gonna use resources in the background. So turn your Wi-Fi off. I recommend that you don't have any other programs open in the background unless they're essential to your live performance. So make sure you've got your web browser closed down, you don't have any word processors or anything else open in the background because all those things are gonna be doing is uh, using resources that you could be giving to main stage and then up here on the top right corner, click on this guy, up on notifications, and just make sure that Do Not Disturb is turned on when you go to perform live so that you don't have any system notifications popping up on screen and using additional resources as well. There's one other thing that you can do, and this is only applicable to folks that own a MacBook with a Retina display. This is a simple optimization that can really make a difference. So you're gonna go to Finder here, and over here on your favorites bar, you're gonna click on Applications, Scroll down and find Main Stage 3. Now, right click or two finger click on a uh, touchpad on Main Stage 3 and choose Get Info. When you click on that, it's gonna open up this little window here. And there's this little checkbox that says Open in Low Resolution Mode. If you are having trouble with Main Stage chewing up your resources, some users have experienced a big drop in their CPU usage when they check this Open in Low Resolution box. Now your display might look a little less pristine, you might lose a little sharpness on the edges, but it's still totally functional for live performance. So that's an easy optimization that doesn't really cost you anything at all in feel or performance. Now let's open up main stage. I've got our Sunday Keys main stage template open, but these optimization steps are the same no matter what concert you use. Now up here in edit mode, at the top of your concert, you probably seeing three little windows like this that say CPU, MIDI in, and memory. Now, some folks may not see CPU and memory by default. You might just see the MIDI in. If that's you, go up to Main Stage 3 and Display Preferences. And then check this box that says Show Toolbar CPU and Memory Meters. 
You can view your CPU usage by double clicking on the CPU meter. And when you do, you'll see this scrolling graph from right to left, and that represents your current CPU usage. You can see that I'm about in between 36 and 48% CPU usage. And if I play some notes, you can see that CPU usage will jump up and then it will settle back down after I release those notes. Now, you might think that this seems really high to be idling at over a third of my CPU usage used. The important thing to know is that this percentage here doesn't represent all of my CPU, uh, CPU capability. So 100% isn't the max that I can go to. Um, in a, a MacBook or any other Mac computer, your Mac will have multiple cores of CPU. And so 100% equals one full core. So I have a quad core Mac, which means that I have four cores in my computer and that gives me four more virtual cores. So I have the potential to go up to 800% CPU usage in theory. Now, if I get that high, I'm going to be running into issues with audio dropouts and glitches before I get all the way up to 800%. But um, in theory, you can go over 100% and you don't necessarily need to worry about that as long as things are still working fine. Um, so yeah, just don't be alarmed if you notice that you're getting like 50%, 60%. That's, that's totally normal. And as long as you're not running into any audio issues, if it's not actually affecting your live performance, you don't need to be concerned about it necessarily. Now, here's the two simplest st steps you can take to optimize your concert. First is the size of your concert. You wanna remove all unneeded patches before you go to perform live. Now this is the stock Sunday Keys concert. So it has a lot of patches loaded in, and this is so that you can find the presets that sound great for you, so you can use Patch Builder to quickly build layered patches. Um, but then after you've designed your patch list, I recommend that you just do a file uh, save as, rename the concert something like today's date or whatever is going to help you remember what it is, and then delete all of the patches that you don't need for a specific performance. Now, don't let that make you feel like you can only have three or four patches open. I've done performances with 20 or 30 patches in my patch list and done just fine. But the principle is the slimmer your concert is, the lower your CPU usage would be. If you need a patch, keep it in your concert. That's fine and find other ways to optimize if needed. But if you don't need a patch for a given concert or performance, then just save as, delete out the patches that you don't need. All right, now the second big step that you can take that's gonna make a big impact on your CPU usage is in audio preferences. So we're gonna to go to main stage three preferences and choose audio. What we really wanna talk about right now is in advanced audio settings. This is where you can adjust your I.O. buffer size. And if you don't know what a buffer size is, this is how much time you give main stage to process everything it needs to process before it gives back the notes that you put into it. So if I play middle C, I'm telling main stage right now you have 512 samples, which is a measure of time, to play middle C uh, audibly. So when I, I put in the MIDI note, MIDI C3 right here, Main stage has 512 samples worth of time to play back that audio. So the general principle is larger sample sizes uh, reduce your CPU strain because you're giving main stage more time to do the things that you're asking it to do. But lower sample size, uh, lower buffer sizes uh, feel more responsive, right? So the longer the pause is between when you play a note and when you hear it. Uh, the less satisfying and snappy that can feel for a live performance. That, that term, that, that space between playing a note and hearing a note is called latency. And that's what you can see right here uh, with my sample uh, buffer size set to 512 samples. The resulting latency is 48.5 milliseconds. And the output latency, which is the actual distance between playing and hearing, is 36.9 milliseconds. Now that's pretty small. Uh, but for some folks, and especially for like snappy parts like piano parts where there's a lot of changes to the notes, you, you might notice that latency and it might be uncomfortable for you. I generally recommend that folks start with a sample size of 128 for their buffer size. Um, and now this may be too high, it may be too low just depending on the specs of your computer, but it's a great place to start. And if you notice that your CPU usage is really high, then it's a good idea to go up to 256 and see how that feels. I'm at 512 right now because I'm doing a screen recording at the same time as running main stage and I'm pushing my computer kind of hard in two directions, so I had a higher sample size. But 128 is a great place to start. 
Generally, I don't go under 128. With 128 on a, a pretty well-specced computer, you can get about 10 milliseconds of output latency. Um, and about 10 milliseconds is right on the threshold of perceptibility. That's uh, for humans, where they, they will or won't notice it. Anything less than 10 milliseconds, and it's very unlikely that you would notice any improvement. So if you go down to 64 or 32, you're going to be pushing your computer harder without actually making much of a difference uh, in performance and how it feels. So I generally don't go any lower than 128. I know some folks say that they can feel the difference. So it's up to you to try out these different settings and balance how it feels versus how much strain it's putting on your computer. Now the last big concept I want to touch on today is this. Not all plugins and audio effects are created equal. Some require very little processing power, Others are very power hungry and can very quickly make your concert sluggish and less responsive. So I'm going to close Sunday Keys here and we're going to open up a stock concert. I'm going to go to Keyboards and choose the Keyboard Minimalist Concert. Alright, so now I have the stock Keyboard Minimalist Concert open. There are a few plugins you really want to exercise caution with. The first is really frustratingly included in almost all of the stock patch presets in MainStage and it's sort of hidden away in their bus effects. So let me explain what I mean. This is the classic electric piano preset. It's the only patch that's open in the Keyboard Minimalist Concert. What I want you to notice, it's a very simple channel strip here. It's just got the electric piano plug-in loaded, but it also has two bus sends. And those bus sends are bus one and bus two, and they're two reverb buses. When I go up here to the concert level by clicking on the concert name there, I want you to notice that this concert has four buses loaded in by default, and they all include the Space Designer Reverb plugin that looks like this. Now this is a nice sounding reverb plugin. I use it all the time when I'm doing recording projects in Logic Pro, but it's incredibly inefficient for live use. Uh, it's very, very power hungry. I honestly recommend you avoid using this plugin at all costs during a live performance. It's really that inefficient. So the tricky thing is that oftentimes in the stock patch presets in main stage, the Space Designer Reverb plugin is hidden at the concert level. So when you load a patch into your concert, maybe using the patch library here, we'll just load in a piano. It'll load up like this and it'll look innocent and innocuous, but then you'll see that it, it has these two buses that it adds to your concert. And they all have this doggone Space Designer Reverb. So they're, they're really inefficient, and if you don't pay attention, it's really easy to add these patches and think that they sound great, but then your concert starts to perform really sluggishly, and it's because Space Designer is so inefficient. So there's a few other plugins to use with mindfulness of their higher CPU usage. Alchemy is a really great uh, instrument plugin that was added in MainStage 3.3, but it is a little bit of a CPU resource hog. Um, Third-party plugins like Omnisphere, Keyscape, Contact, they can all use more CPU resources than a lot of the built-in plugins and audio effects in main stage. They can still totally be used, um, but you just have to keep an eye on your CPU usage to make sure that you're being as efficient as possible. Now, if your computer is souped up with 16 gigs of RAM and a really fast, solid-state hard drive, you could probably get away with running Keyscape and Omnisphere and Contact and Alchemy and even Space Designer. But if you have an older MacBook where you don't have top of the line specs, then you have to do what you need to do to make your concert as efficient as possible. So the main rule of thumb is just be mindful of the fact that you can push your computer too hard. You might not be pushing your computer too hard, but unlike a Nord or a Yamaha or a Roland keyboard where Everything you can ask that keyboard to do, it can do. It has the resources to do. That's not always the case when you connect a MIDI controller to your computer. Each computer has different capabilities and a cap on how much it can do and how quickly it can do those things. All right, folks, so I hope that you find these tips helpful. I guarantee that if you follow these steps that you will notice an increased level of performance from your computer when you use Main Stage 3. Now, if this tutorial was helpful for you, I'd really appreciate it if you left a comment, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or over on our blog at sundaysounds.com. You can give it a like and even share it with a friend that uses Main Stage as well if you think that they might find it helpful. Now, if you'd like to be the first to know when we release new main stage tutorials like this one and get answers to main stage questions you have yourself, I'd love to invite you to join our Facebook group, 
Sunday Sounds Insiders. So if you head over to Facebook and just type Sunday Sounds Insiders into the search bar, we've got over 3,000 Mainstage users in that group and it's an awesome community of folks who are using Mainstage just like you. You'll get early access to the Mainstage tutorials that we release, you'll have a say in the tutorials that we shoot next, and we've even got some free patches that you can download when you head over to that group. So again, head over to the Sunday Sounds Insiders Facebook group to join that community. Thank you for watching this video. Again, I hope it was helpful. And if we can ever help you out with anything in Mainstage at sundaysounds.com, feel free to shoot us an email. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.